Why spend money on something when you can spend many hours designing something and building it yourself? Joking aside, I'm actually pretty impressed with this thing. Except for the blade and the cordage, the whole thing is 3D printed and it's actually pretty sturdy. It doesn't need any tools to assemble or disassemble. It could be completely taken down and fits right in your pack. And when I put it on the weight scale, it only weighed 537 grams. My 3D print projects follow three design tent poles. First is it needs to be simple to print, assemble, and use. The second is that it needs to be reliable when being used. And the third is that it needs to be something that's actually useful to people. That generally means 3D printing as many of the parts as possible in as few pieces as possible. I also try to minimize any tools or hardware needed to assemble or disassemble it, like nuts and bolts. Joints and where parts mate are hot spots for breakage. This buck saw build has four main 3D printed parts. It has a set of two handles, the cross beam stretcher, the toggle, and the two pins inserted into the blade to secure it against the handles as the cordage is wound taut. The tops of the handles definitely bow inwards while under tension, but they do flatten back out once the tension's released. All of the parts are printed completely solid, printed in a way that the layers are perpendicular to the tension for max strength. Unfortunately, it's only got a 15 inch blade as that's the longest I could print the stretcher in one single print. And even then I had to angle it corner to corner on my print bed in order to fit. This design actually took a few iterations. I had to bulk up the handle where it meets the stretcher and I found out rather quickly that this needs to be 100% infill for it to not break under strain. I printed mine in ABS so that it has good strength with a bit of flex, but honestly as long as it's not exposed to hot temperatures, PLA might actually work for this. Alright, talking about it's one thing, let's actually assemble this thing and uh, put it to use. So cross beam goes into there like that, then the blade goes in. See how there's uh, holes on either side? These little 3D printed pins go in with the flat side facing down like so. And now we wind this. There. So like I said, the only thing that's not 3D printed on this thing is the cordage, which is just your everyday dollar store paracord and the 15 inch saw blade. All right, so I've got this big, huge dead tree to test this thing out on. Let's go ham. This thing is rock solid, man. All right, let's cut through right here. And that's a good, oh, I don't know. How big would you say that is? Not the most hugest piece of wood, but it's decent. Uh, here you can see the diameter of the wood compared to the, the saw. Well, this thing is holding up actually a lot better than I thought it would. No hot spots where the plastic's starting to give way. So like I said, this thing weighs 537 grams. Uh, it weighs more than the equivalent uh, Boreal 15 by about 25% more. But I'm honestly pretty confident that with enough refining of the design, I can actually get the weight of this either comparable to or under the uh, equivalent Boreal 15, especially here in the stretcher. I think that's where I could lose a lot of the weight because that is a very thick and bulky piece. Like that's, that's solid ABS. And uh, I'll leave some links in the description if you want to buy the 3D models to print your own or if you want to order a 3D printed kit from me. As with any of my tools that I design and 3D print, I have the plan of actually bringing this out with me as my camp saw. So you can look forward to me actually having this with me in some of my upcoming trip videos, especially in and around the cold weather. It'll be interesting to see how the ABS holds up in uh, sub-zero temperatures. Yeah, anyways, that's it for this one guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next video.